Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Life After Kids with Drs. Brooke and Lynn. I'm Dr. Brooke. And I'm Dr. Lynn. And we're so glad you're joining us today. We are. We're talking about sleep today. A hot topic. A hot topic. Your favorite in topic. In midlife. My favorite topic in midlife. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's friend or foe, right? Yes. You either sleep well or you don't sleep well. And it seems like there's very little midline so yeah especially in midlife especially if we get older we realize how important it is yes it becomes more important and this falls under well i think it falls under two of our foundations i think it falls under vitality and physical health but certainly emotional health because if you're not sleeping well you're not going to function well from a physical standpoint yeah. or a mental standpoint and we've talked about this before like just you and i in our conversations because i really you don't struggle with sleep lucky you but i do um, and just like you and end up in that negative cycle because if you're stressed, you're yeah. not going to sleep well and then you don't sleep well and then you're more stressed and it's just like, yeah. it's an ongoing hamster even, wheel. Even though I don't necessarily, I wouldn't say I struggle with sleep, but I'm very sensitive to if I don't get sleep. You are. And life happens and I just came off of a trip and we had to stay up late and I definitely feel the difference today. I mean, what we need you to know about sleep is it's the only time that your body has fully dedicated to regenerating itself and healing itself. Yeah. So unless you're getting good quality sleep, your body is just continually going through the day, breaking itself down and never getting that chance to build itself back up, right? That's absolutely right. And when you get into a deep sleep, it's also a chance for your brain to detox and re-equilibrate, if that's a word. Yeah. But it's it just is a time for your whole body mm -hmm. to heal and restore and rest and it's so important especially in today's world where everything is go 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 yeah um we just need to sleep current research out like the most current is now saying like six to seven hours actually which is surprising instead eight. yeah instead of eight but you have to that's the caveat there is that it's good quality deep sleep yeah. so that's the problem i think so many of us at this phase of life yeah. I know I, I don't do this anymore because I've worked really hard in my sleep, but you'll fall asleep and then wake up. Yeah. And then you can't go back to sleep with your mind racing. Yeah. So, so it's interrupted. You have to go to the bathroom, whatever it is. So you're not getting deep sleep. And then if you're not getting a deep, restful sleep, now you require eight, nine, ten hours just to feel like you can function the next That's day. Funny. Um, so what are some of the things that I know the things that affect my sleep, but what would you say are the biggest culprits to affecting sleep? From a negative that? standpoint? From a, from oh a negative yeah. Standpoint. Well, I mean, hands down stress, <laughs> that's an easy no brainer one. But if I am on my computer, if I'm working too late at night, and I know we've taught, you talked about this with Mark with the aura ring, Yeah. Um, but not only working cause my brain is stimulated, but just the blue light of the screens yeah. is problematic for me. And then the older I get, the more sensitive I get with my eating. If I eat too late at night, I used to be able to eat right before bed. Um, and go to sleep no problem now i'll have like some heartburn and i have that would really disrupt my sleep too so those are probably yeah. aside from like travel and jet lag those are probably my biggest so the story with the aura ring that you just mentioned a moment ago is my husband started to wear one and it does track your quality of sleep mm -hmm. it measures a whole bunch of things if you're one of those people that's into those metrics and seeing that on a daily basis i highly recommend it but um, when he's working too late um, on his device, even just in meetings or on calls, things he's not exerting a lot of physical energy, but he has really noticed a consistency in it affecting his sleep score. Yeah, you mentioned that to me, and it's really interesting to see that. And if you are somebody who um, sleeps well and just wants to improve their sleep, or you're struggling and you want some like good, solid answers of why, you might want to look into the Aura Ring. Um, because it can really be beneficial. You and I have had this conversation and we're both hard no's because we'll obsess over it and like, <laughs> right? I mean, that would be a disaster, but that might be something sometimes to consider. Sometimes what you don't know does, doesn't hurt you. Yes, it's sometimes you, ignorance is bliss. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. Because we're doing the right things. I mean, yeah. it's not like anger says, you know what I mean by that. Anyway, um, yeah, so what else? We were talking about food. So too. back to food and what you take in. I mean, we know that what you take in affects us on so many levels, right? Yeah. But especially when it comes to your sleep and eating late at night. And the reason that it does is because your body is just working overtime to try to digest. Mm -hmm. So when you go to bed, you really want to be done with the bulk of your digestion and you want your body to just be able to focus on going in and finding cells to repair and regenerate, right? right? Like you said, detoxifying the brain. And so digestion is a job for your body. You need to think of it like that. 
So stopping eating at least, what would you recommend? Three to four hours before bedtime? That's ideal, but at a minimum two. Yeah. Like no more than two out, no less than two hours. Yeah. But if you could get three or four, that's ideal. Yeah, and so that's another reason to work on your blood sugar because if you're somebody who can't go that long, then there's some indications that you have some, you know, probably more serious fluctuations in your blood sugar. Right. And that's something to peel back the onion layers and some things you talk about, um, you, you know, you talk yeah. about with the things that you, you speak about in vitality. Yeah. And by the way, just real quick, because you brought up um, uh, balancing your blood sugar, that was key for me with my sleep. Like when I, and I've talked about this before with night sweats and other things, but it, for many of us, we wake up because our blood sugar is dropping and tanking through the night and it wakes us. And so if you can get yourself into a rhythm where you really, and what that will look like, and we, we have, we talk about this in our webinar and in other places, like in a really a deep dive, deep but when you minimize your carbs and eat good, healthy fats to sustain yourself and save most of your carbohydrates for your meal that's at dinner and make that your biggest meal, at least for me, that was a game changer with sleep. Yep. And you'll know if you're waking up at two, three in the morning, like that specific time tends to be your liver, your, yeah. right, your pancreas. So that's when your, you know, your body runs out of the glucose that it has stored. Yeah, it if can. it can't switch into that fat burning mode. And we really, most of us store extra fat. And so we, it's, you know, it's really worth going through the work to do those things to get to a place where when you, you know, run out of the energy of the food, you're done digesting, your body can actually tap into the fat that you have stored to burn for energy. Yeah, while you sleep, which is great. Well, right? Yeah. Yeah. But here again, um, I think we should have this conversation about go for, and if you need to do a deep dive in what is causing the sleep disruption, right? And don't just treat it symptomatically. And there are many different causes for lack of sleep. That could be, like we said, balanced blood sugar. That could be your hormones are out of balance. That could be your digestion is off and waking you up through the night. It could be that your liver is congested and it starts to try to detox at two, three in the morning and that's waking you up. Um, it could just simply be that you're in a state of fight or flight and you need to manage your stress better. Yeah. But there are various ways that little sleep show up for us. Many of us at this stage of life, it's hormonal related, but that can also tie into blood sugar. But there are many things that you can do, and we can have a quick talk about some of the things that you can do for symptomatic relief. Great. Because sometimes it's just a matter of breaking that cycle yeah. and getting one or two good nights sleep to break yourself out of that pattern, and then you can do these lifestyle changes that will help and get to the cause. Yeah. But I would always encourage everyone and any of my clients that I've worked with, like before you go to, even if it's an herbal supplement to help you sleep, try some of these other modifications yeah, and look so for what, the cause first. What do you recommend? My first and foremost, most favorite is magnesium. I sleep my deepest sleeps when I take my magnesium at night before bed, when I heavy load that, and it also helps with going to the bathroom first thing in the morning. Magnesium is a stress mineral. It's also a muscle relaxer. It helps move things out of your digestive system, and it puts you into a state of uh, relaxation yep. before bed. So that is, I think, this, the... Um, most beneficial for me, it's a big move, needle mover and it's very gentle. You don't really, I mean, the worst side effect is going to be if you take too much, you're going to have like a loose stool in the morning. Yeah. So there's not really like some of these things you have to watch when it comes to your sleep because you don't want to do them long term and they can mess with your circadian rhythm and other things. Um, taking magnesium is very gentle. Okay. It's Dr. Brooke approved. I like it. That means it's not going to. Yeah, because you know, I always upset. err on the side of caution. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Um, what form do you take your magnesium in? Right now I'm taking magnesium malate. That seems to be because I have, have to get things moving digestively. TMI again from Dr. Brooke. Um, but the malate seems to do that the best for me. Okay. I've also done glycinate. If you're high stress um, and you don't have issues with digestion, glycinate is a really nice one too. It's Great. very bioavailable. Great. Anything yeah. else in terms of helping promote that? Good uh, sleep. sleep. Um, blue light blockers, if you are on your screen. At night, blue light, block, blue light blocking glasses are fabulous. Um, if in an ideal world, you're going to put it away at least an hour and a half before bed, but most of us don't. You're going to check a text or you're going to watch TV or whatever it is. And so if you're doing that, just put grab, you know, they're not We're overly glasses. expensive, but yeah. that has helped me a lot. Um, and then if I could just throw out one, I hesitate to throw out herbal supplements because you have to watch, even though it's an herb, but valerian root is fabulous for sleep. Great. That's a relaxant and... 
Mm-hmm. The nervous system relaxes, right? Yeah, it's yeah. a cal- it's a calmative and it will help with sleep. Great. So um, I'll just end with the one culprit that disrupts my sleep, other yep. than the obvious things like travel and staying up late. Um, it's alcohol. And yeah. I just, the older I get, and so if you haven't drawn that connection to how alcohol affects your sleep, mm. take a look at it and, you know, just start to think about the nights that you don't sleep well. For sure. Because it can be something that we don't always, you know, equate to affecting our sleep. But really and truly, um, you know, that alcohol will prevent our body from Oh, it disrupts our blood sugar. Yep. So to those points, but and overtaxes your liver, which will wake you up. Your liver. So this is a good point. I'm glad you brought this up because most of us think of alcohol as helping us sleep. Oh, I can't calm down to go to sleep, but when yep. I have a glass of wine, yep. and it might relax you enough to get into a sleep, but it's not going to give you a good deep quality sleep. Is the problem? Yeah. So even if it puts you to sleep, you're not going to sleep deeply. So. Yep. I joke, and I think I've shared this before that, like, because I really, you guys know by now that I really don't drink, but I'm like, if I'm going to drink, I'm a day drinker, <laughs> which is backwards, it's but true. it's true because I know that um, if I have a drink at lunch or brunch yeah. or whatever it is, that by the time I'm going to bed, it's been metabolized and it's not going to mess with yeah. my sleep. Yep. Yeah. So I typically, or I might have one at an early dinner, but I'm not typically the person that's out like at 10, 11. I'm sounding so old here, but if we're all going out for drinks after dinner, that's not typically when yeah. I'll have my drink. So yeah. anyway, food for thought. This has been a good conversation. Yep. Yeah. And have a good night's sleep. I yes. Hope, get your everyone. Z's. <laughs> and thank you for joining the conversation. Make sure you're following us on all our social media outlets. And our website is www.lifeafterkids.com. And we look forward to talking again soon. See you next time.